it's my first week of teaching high school. I'm standing in the middle of the campus during lunch. There's about 3,000 students there. It's a big high school. The dean comes up to me and points out all the different gangs, the groups of gangs, standing together in different parts of the campus. Now, to my untrained eye, they all just look the same, just like a, a mass of students hanging out. But that's not the case with today's film. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet, full of all the stuff that I love. And today, a film about gangs in the early 60s that you can definitely tell apart from each other. Let's check it out. Today's film is The Wanderers from 1979. Uh, it's in color. It's about two hours long. This takes place 1963 in the Bronx, and it's about a, a group of kids in a gang called The Wanderers, the high school seniors. And it's a coming of age story about them dealing with friendships and girls and growing up and uh, rival gangs. Uh, the, the director was Philip Kaufman, probably best known for directing The Right Stuff and Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the 1978 remake, which was quite good. Richard Price uh, wrote the novel this was based on. He's primarily known as a novelist, and the novel was uh, semi-autobiographical. He grew up as a teenager in this area. And he also wrote the screenplay for The Color of Money, uh, Sea of Love, and Clockers, based on his novel Clockers. And uh, he also was uh, heavily involved with the great TV series, The Wire. Uh, the cinematographer was the great Michael Chapman, worked on Raging Bull and Taxi Driver, among other very good films. Um, uh, Ken Wall is the, uh, plays the main character. He's probably best known for the TV series Wise Guy. And Karen Allen is his, sort of his love interest. And interesting, her character, they make her the only character without a heavy New York accent. So it kind of sets her apart and makes her very uh, interesting to Ken Wall's character. So Karen Allen, best known for the Indiana, Indiana Jones films. Uh, probably her first big film was the National Lampoon's Animal House. And she was in Starman. And she was in a really good film called King of the Hill, the uh, Steven Soderbergh film, which I think is underrated. And maybe I'll do an episode on that at some point. Uh, that's a Criterion Collection film, really good. Um, I also need to point out two supporting uh, actors because when I first saw this film in 1979, those are the two actors that I think of. And one was this guy named uh, Erlon Van Lith, and he plays a character named Terror, and he's part of the Baldies gang. That's because they're all bald. And uh, this guy was six foot six, weighed 340 pounds, so big guy. He was actually uh, tried out for the, uh, the wrestling team for the Olympics. Uh, didn't quite make it. Something happened with the Olympics that year. And uh, he died early, age 34, of a heart failure. Now his girlfriend, who's named Pee Wee, was played by Linda Manns. And she was best known for Days of Heaven. And she is tiny. There's one scene, and they're a couple. So there's one scene where there's a close-up of the two of them making out. And then the camera pulls away. And Terror is holding Pee-wee in his arms, cradling her almost like a baby. That's how tiny she is compared to the Sky Terror. So they're a very memorable couple in this film. Now, the first thing I should warn you about if you do consider seeing this film is the language. And I don't mean just the R-rated language. There's plenty of that. But uh, this is not for the easily offended. There's a lot of ethnic slurs in here. Uh, the N-word is used quite often, uh, slang for Italians used quite often, and slang for uh, gay people used quite often too. So if you are easily offended, you might want to steer clear of this one. I'm going to assume this was the vernacular of that time and place. Um, the gangs are grouped by ethnicity. Um, you have the Italian gang, the Irish gang, the black gang, the Asian gang, and they all have their own names, of course. They're more like clubs in a way. In fact, they, they say no guns, no knives whenever they're going to get together and have some kind of brawl or something. Um, that's their motto in a way. That's their rule. With one exception, there's a gang called the Ducky Boys, and all the other gangs are kind of freaked out by them, and they don't even talk. And yeah, they like to use knives. I'm not going to say any more, but... 
they're kind of the outliers among this group of gangs that are more like clubs. Um, while I was watching this, I was thinking, is this sort of like the New York version of American Graffiti, which is a film I'm pretty familiar with? And I think in some ways it is, but you know, kind of superficially, because it's, it's an anecdotal type of storyline. Um, it's funny, it's innocent, more innocent time. The rock and roll music permeates the entire film, of course, and it's nostalgic. But The Wanderers is a lot different. It's a lot grungier, it's R-rated. It's uh, not related to cruising and the car culture like American Graffiti is. Um, it didn't produce the same number of stars like American Graffiti did, like Richard Dreyfuss and Harrison Ford and um, Ron Howard. Um, it has kind of a bittersweet ending to it because it is 1963, so there are going to be some big changes in society. There's going to be some big changes culturally. There's a great uh, a few moments where uh, there's a Marine recruiter, very straight laced, staring out from his recruitment office it's all the gangsters and you know he's just plotting like I want to get these guys they think they're tough I'm gonna get them I'm not gonna say anymore but that's that ha something happens with that um, and uh, there's big cultural changes and uh, you know some of the kids change some of them kind of stay the same it's kind of ironic that uh, some of them are called the wanderers and that they sing that song the wanderer by Dion because most of these kids, they're not really wandering. They're just kind of staying in that neighborhood, maybe for the rest of their lives, it seems like. Um, the look of 1963 is perfect. The hair, the dancing, the clothes, the slang, uh, everything works really well. It's a beautiful looking film. And apparently when this was released in 1979, there were some uh, violent incidents in some movie theaters. So some of the uh, theater owners were reluctant to show the Wanderers because they thought it's about gangs and it's gonna to be too violent. So it didn't get a real proper release. Overseas, however, in other countries, it got a good release and was really successful. In fact, the director said, I believe he says, he went to Japan at one point and some of the kids were wearing Wanderers jackets. So it kind of grew from there and, and now it kind of has a cult classic status and which is probably deserved. So, you know, this is a really a fun film. It also has a lot of memorable lines too, which people like to quote uh, quite often. Um, this is a really well done film. It's really enjoyable. You know, at about the uh, hour and a half mark, I looked at my watch and I thought, wow, this film's really moving along fast and there's only about 20 minutes left or 30 minutes left. I'm kind of sorry that it's, I'm kind of sad that it's gonna end so fast because I'm really enjoying this thing. The performances, the look, Everything is top notch. I'm going to give it four and a half musical notes because of all the music out of five. Uh, this is a Kino disc. So if you find it on sale for 10 bucks or so, and you like this kind of film, go for it. Right now, I think it's about 15 bucks on Amazon. It has a commentary, which I did not listen to. It has a couple of Q and A's with the actors and the uh, filmmakers. It has uh, Richard Price, who wrote the novel, uh, driving around the Bronx, pointing out different places where he used to hang out when he was a kid, a teenager. That's about a half hour long. And um, there's also something called the preview cut, which looks like it's about 10 minutes longer. I didn't get a chance to look at that, so I'm not sure how different that is. But it looks great, and it sounds great. Uh, where can you see The Wanderers? There's something called Tubi, which I've heard of. I don't really know how that works. It might be free, I'm not sure. It's playing on there apparently. Otherwise, you can try your local library. You can always rent it and you can always buy it. So, The Wanderers. Maybe uh, you have a gang-related film that you like. This is not a hardcore gang film. So, it's not gonna be like American Me or something like that. It's a 60s style gang film. So, anyways. Feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down here. Leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Getting close to 250. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Otherwise, hope you like this one. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.